Hi, it's James Mitchell. Here's another video on workshop software. I really hope you get some great value from it and you enjoy it. All the best. Hi, welcome to this video in the Workshop Software Quick Start video series. This is a series which helps you get up and running with Workshop Software real quickly. In this video, we're going to see just how simple it is to manage our products and add products into the system. To add some products, first up, I'm actually going to go off and do an invoice and show you how simple it is in the invoicing and a couple of ways that we can do it in the invoice. So in this instance, I'm actually going to jump into the Repco integration because when I pull products across from my Repco system, what that does is it will actually add the products into the system for us. So this is one way of adding products into the system. So in this instance, I'm going to return a quote. And this is going to return all the details from that quote from Repco. And if you want more info on this, watch the Repco video itself. But if any of these products that got transferred over didn't exist, they would automatically get created and added into our system. So that's one way of adding products. Another way is, is if I type in part or, or all of a, a part number, you see that at the bottom it's got add this product. So if I click on the add this product button, it will come up with the details of that product and what I can do is if I go through now and put in some details of that product so I'm going to make it $42 or something like that <clears throat> so I enter in all of the information about the product and go save that product not only now is on that invoice but it's actually also in our product table let's go take a look if I press save on that invoice I can now come back over to the product section over on the left here and click on products there's a couple of ways of searching for products as well. What I could do is I could either search up here and I could type in DB105, you know, for example, and it would find it and I could open it. The other way is I could type in here and go and type a similar thing and I can open up the, that particular product. So it's got all the details of the product. It's got any invoice and orders, history and any stock taking that we might have done. So let's, also, let's just delve a little bit deeper into the details of what is in here. So we've got a couple of descriptions. We've got some searchable tags. I'll come back to that in a second because that's really cool and really important as a really simple way of finding products. You can put groups in against products and you can add groups on here as well. Now one important thing too is the stock type. So we've got different types of stock. So we've got stock which is parts typically that you sell, uh, labor which is doing labor work and repair and services and so on. Sublet repair is subletting work outside of your workshop. A consumable is a you know oil, greases, you know, environmental levies, those sorts of products. Accessories are one way of us differentiating between products and what we call accessories. So say for example, if you sell a four wheel drive specialist and maybe you sell a whole lot of four wheel drive accessories and you wanted to report on those separately from your actual hard parts or your stock if you like, so your actual repair and service parts and you can split them up between stock and accessories. And we've also got the setting of tires. Now the reason why we split these up is because in the reporting in the system you can actually get different levels of reporting based upon different things. But there's also one important thing around labour because if a product is set up as labour, it does a couple of different things. So for example, in the booking diary, you can uh, put estimate of time against it. Um, it prints in, in a different section on the invoice and a couple of different things like that. So it's important to make sure that you've got the right uh, stock type section there. You've also got the supplier, the brand, location, minimum, maximum for reordering. There's also this interesting setting called don't update quantity. Now this is, if you don't want to manage your quantity on a particular product or in fact on all products, you can set it if you like. Um, you can say, yes, I, I don't want to update the quantity. So in other words, I don't want it to adjust my stock on hand as I buy and sell it. But it's still a product that I want to be able to have in the system and I also want to see its history. You know, I want to have its pricing in here and that sort of thing. So I can say don't update quantity. So this can be really great for the things like miscellaneous products. It can be great for for products that maybe are, you know, the odd things that you don't necessarily want to keep a quantity on, you can say don't update quantity. So that will mean that when you go and look at things like stock value and stuff like that, you're not, you've not sold, you know, a thousand of these little widgets and it says minus a thousand stock on hand. You've also got a retail and price 234 and your cost price. There's some comments that can print out. These comments will print out on the invoice and these comments will print out on the job card. So this can be great for particularly things like if I go and search, if I just go back into products and I'll show you, say the setup of one of my brake services. 
So you'll notice in here, this is a break service. This has actually been set for labor, so I can put labor times against it. And this has now got all of these comments here. I can make this box a little bit bigger. And it's got these comments here, which are gonna print on the job card. And these comments are gonna print out on the invoice as well. So they can be great for labor items, but they can also be just as great for stock items as well. So you've got your invoices and orders and so on down the bottom. So that's a couple of differences between the uh, stock and labor. The other important thing too is the service. So this service will mean that if this is set to yes, it will mean that when your, your a customer comes in and buys this product from you, it will update their service vehicle interval. So if, if this is set for a service and they've got a service every six months, this will say, okay, from today, six months down the track, they will need an, another service. So that's an important setting for those products that are service. So let's just take a quick look at that. So if I go and find a product, I've got one here called service, and this one is set to service, has been set to yes. So there's a couple of things with the, with the products. Let's go have a look at this searchable tags. The searchable tags, if I type in 195, say 65, you'll notice here that this tire product has come up because it's got the tag here. So if I just open it and have a look, you'll see that this has got the searchable tag. Although the item code we're using, the manufacturer's item code, and we had in the description the tire, but it actually wasn't written the same way, so it's got the slashes in it. Uh, but this searchable tag will allow us to go and search for that product based upon that searchable tag. So it can be something that is any words, any letters, any numbers that you want to put against the product so that you can go then later and search for it and find it. So those searchable tags are really important um, and can be a great way to go and find uh, specific products, great for tires, but it can also be good for the really odd product that you know was for a specific vehicles, for example. So you might want to put in a, a, you know, if it was an odd vehicle, uh, you could put in the vehicle details in here or something like that. So those searchable tags can be a great way of finding products. So there you have it, the different types of products, how to add a product, how to edit the product. If we changed anything here, we can just scroll down and click on save and that product is saved. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and it's been valuable to you.